for you to understand my story, to understand my topic, I have to explain to you who I am. So let me introduce, start off by introducing myself and telling you something about myself. In 2004, I officially became a software tester. And back then, it wasn't something that you brought about, especially if you had been a developer or a test analyst as I had been. Both jobs were scarce, the internet bubble had just happened, and I decided to grab the opportunity with both hands and to give it a chance. In hindsight, it was the best thing that could have happened to me and that could have happened to my career. Te software testing proved to be diverse, exciting and challenging. I grew from an analyst to being an expert. I became really good in what I do. I publish nationally and internationally. I speak nationally and internationally. I've been part of, a, I've been chair of an international program, uh, testing conference, and I've even been part of a program committee of the most prestigious software testing conference in Europe, Eurostar. I've participated in, an, in developing the international software testing standard, and I'm part of different international bodies like ISTQB. But I'm not only basing my story and how good I am at my work, because I'm also very good in my hobbies, being a casualty simulation victim. making miniatures, decorating cakes, and I do an awesome job cooking. And not only I think I'm very good at it, but all other people think it too. Now I see some uneasy shifting in chairs, some uneasy looks, I could almost hear the thought, is she serious going on about herself for this whole talk? How did this woman get to the ballot committee? Guess what? That's what I wanted to happen. You might have noticed that I felt very uncomfortable just now. And that's what I wanted to, you to feel too, very uncomfortable. Because that feeling that you are experiencing is what I call the Calvinistic reaction. Let me explain. The, Calvinist, uh, the Calvinistic reaction derives from Calvinism. And Calvinism dates back from the 16th century. And it follows the theological beliefs and pra political practices and social beliefs derived from it. It spread widely across Europe, but it became particularly popular in the Netherlands, where its political beliefs are embedded in our constitution, and the social beliefs are really rooted into our culture. We even have a set of properties that we describe as typically Dutch behavior when we say someone is Calvinistic. Properties like modesty, being modest in showing emotions, not flaunting your successes, and frugality, you know, being economical. And there's even an anecdote about that. Back in 49, there were two US officials who traveled around Europe to see if, how the martial help was spent. And because of the festivities in Italy went on a bit longer than expected, they didn't arrive until Sunday in the Netherlands. Back then, Willem Drees was our Prime Minister, and he didn't feel like opening up the whole ministry for that visit, so he decided to invite him back home. And he just lived in a rental, simple rental home on the Beeklaan in The Hague. So when the two officials arrived there, there was already the first awkward moment when they thought the butler opened the door, but in fact it was Mr. Mr. Drees himself. And then, that is where the anecdote is famous for, tea was served. And Mrs. Drees served out Maria kaakjes, 
And I don't know if you know Maria Kaatjes, but they are very little dry biscuits. And they are not the height of festivities on a Sunday afternoon. Harriman even made this picture out of it, because he thought they would never believe this back in Washington. <laughs> and it was said that after Herman and Hoffman left, that the Maria Kaatjes were responsible for not only, well, they said, where a country where, this, where the Prime Minister lives like this, our money is well spent. And it was said that because of the Maria Kaatjes, not only was the martial help extended, but it was also increased. Now, when I talk about the Calvinistic reaction, I'm not referring to frugality. But I'm referring to the other properties. Modesty, being modest in showing emotions, and not flaunting your successes. Because they impact you. Let me explain by two examples that I think you all can relate to. Remember when you last got a compliment? How did it make you feel? Did you try to play down the thing you got the compliment for? Did you feel proud and guilty at the same time? And the second example is giving out a compliment. Not as hard as receiving one, but still difficult to do. Maybe we don't want to burden the other person, suddenly have to flaunt their success. And I find it odd that something that is meant to make us feel good is that difficult. The second part of the Calvinistic reaction relates to something that I find is the key ingredient of becoming successful. It is something that can be taught, but it is the differentiator from growing from good to great. You can learn competences and skills, but you can't learn this. And you might call it being driven, I call it passion. Passion, people that have passion and are able to use passion are able to share more, to inspire more, to teach more. Remember going to school, remember those teachers there, and remember those lessons, particularly that went on and on and on and on and on, and that seemed to last forever, where the world outside seemed a much more interesting place than the room you were in. But no matter what topic, even if you liked the topic, it just didn't seem to stick. And now remember those teachers that we now say he had a heart for his profession. The teachers that, although he didn't like the topic, I bet you still remember some of the things, although you don't use it every day, on a daily basis, you still remember some of the stuff that you have been taught there. It's because of passion. And my personal inspiration is Erik Scherder. Erik Scherder is a, a professor at the VU Amsterdam. And he's head of the Department of uh, Neuropsychology on Neurodegenerative Diseases. And you might know him from popular TV shows like The Wereld Light Door and The Slims to Mens. And because of the passionate approach of this man, he was able to inspire and to influence. Because I got interested in the topic and I tried to apply it in my day at work on a daily basis. It's because of this man that I know that exercising the body is healthy for the brain. And you might have heard of brain gymnastics, for example. Passion has been able to, to make an influence of other people, to other people. But the Calvinistic reaction also um, makes that you miss opportunities. For example, if you're on a table and I ask you, are you good at that? Your reply might be, I guess I am, because you are very careful not to flaunt your success. Be careful not to show passion or too much emotion. And you are lucky when the person on the other side of the table values you on the same Calvinistic scale as you are on. But let's be honest, even I, from the same background, might think, hmm, maybe not the right person for this job then. And you have missed that opportunity. Well, if you would have been able to say, yes, I really like doing that. I feel like I very, find it very much fun, or I really love doing that. Then you might have grabbed that opportunity. Passion also 
makes that a message is perceived differently. When I went on stage, you were just thinking, what an oddball. So let me do my introduction again, but then using passion. In 2004, I officially became a software tester. And back then, you didn't really want to be a software tester, especially if you had been a developer or an analyst, like I had been. But I decided to grab the opportunity because jobs were scarce. The internet bubble had just happened. And I decided to make the most of it and put my heart in it. And guess what? It seemed to be the most exciting, diverse and challenging job ever. And I really love doing it. I love it that much that I really want to be involved so that I publish nationally, internationally, and I speak nationally and internationally. And I got to be involved in all kinds of international bodies to be really participating. And I was so, how cool was it that I was invited to be a chair of the International Cup Testing Conference? And I got to be part of the most prestigious testing conference ever, which by the way had the theme of passion. And I also love cooking, making miniatures, being a, 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 a trauma simulation victim. It inspires me to help others and to teach others how they become really good at it. I really love doing it. And my passion for cooking and making cakes, well, I guess that's why I love hiking that much. See how passion has not altered the content of the message, but has altered maybe how you perceived it. The Calvinistic reaction makes that we are, it represses that passion, so you won't be able to use it to the fullest. You might have not been aware to, of this, so my gift to you is the awareness of this Calvinistic reaction. And my wish for you is that when you leave this room, that you will be able to use a bit more passion for yourself. Because then you will also be able to grow from good to great.